Great. Hopefully from watching the previous video you have some idea of what we're talking about when we're taking volumes using cross sections. So now at the end of this lesson you'll be able to find the volume of a solid of revolution created by a function base with cross sections perpendicular to an axis. All right, the formula that we will use, basically what we're going to be doing is taking the areas of each of those figures that were sticking out, those cross sections, and what we're going to be doing is adding all those areas together. So just like kind of what we did in the disk method where we were adding a bunch of circles together, this time they'll tell us what kind of shape that we're going to be finding the area of. So basically, very simple formula. The volume will just be A to B, and then it's just going to be the formula for the area of that section. So you'll notice one of them was the area of a square. We would just use the formula formula for the area of a square for that one, right? Um, this one is the one thing that we do have to watch out for on this one. If I'm taking the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis, then everything needs to be in terms of x. So the a and the b, we'll just notate that they are going to be x values. And when I do this to get the area, if I'm doing anything with it, um, my equation will have an x in it. And then the other thing is, if I have to find the, the um, height of something, we will do top minus bottom. Okay. If I take cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis, so the shapes are just going the other way, the C and D values will be y values this time. And then my equations, equations will have a y. And then the other thing is, if we're talking about if we needed to do top minus bottom, if we're doing these ones, we'll do right minus left. So hopefully those things will get us started on working some examples. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to find the volume of the solid whose base is bounded by the graphs of y equals 2, y equals negative 2, x equals negative 4, and x equals 4, whose cross sections taken perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Okay, first let's draw our two-dimensional shape like we're used to doing. Okay, I've got y equals 2. I've got, whoop, it hits at 2, we're going to pretend at least. y equals negative 2, x equals negative 4, and x equals 4. Okay, so we've got something that looks like that. And then, so that's what my shape looks like. I could darken it in, I guess, if I wanted to. And then what's going to happen on this one, um, the cross sections taken perpendicular to the x-axis. So I'm going to go, my cross sections are going to be this way. Okay, they are going to be squares. So if you can imagine, I'm just going to have squares sticking up, coming at me. So I have squares coming at me. Um, if I had to pick something for this, I would think of any sort of um, prism object. Um, in this case, I think I'll take the prism object to be like, if you can remember, like a Hershey's treasure. It's kind of a three-dimensional cubic type object, so that's what we'll go with on this one. All right, so the way that we're going to do this, it's the formula is just volume equals a to b, the area of x. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to go over here and do a little side trip. The area is going to be, since the area set at squares, it's going to be side squared. So if I look at this figure that I just drew here, that's going to be the side of my square. So to get the length of the side of that square, it's going to be the top of the square minus the bottom. So over here, I'm going to have the top is the curve y equals 2, and the bottom is going to be the curve y equals negative 2. And again, that will be squared. And then just to simplify that a little bit, that would just be 4 squared or 16. That doesn't always simplify like that, but this time it did. Okay, so now we're going to do volume equals. It's going to go from an x value to an x value. So negative 4 to positive 4. And the area we found in our side trip was 16. And then it is still with respect to x. And as long as this doesn't look too tedious, let's go ahead and work it non-calculator. The integral of 16 would be 16x. We're going to evaluate it at 4 and negative 4. So um, when I plug in 4, I'll get 64 minus, when I plug in negative 4, I'll get negative 64. And then if I add those two together, my volume will be 128. Alrighty, let's try another one. This time, notice I've got two different things that are going to be going on in my problem. 
All right, the base of a salad is bound by y equals x squared and y equals 1. Find the volume whose cross sections taken perpendicular to the x-axis are squares and then equilateral triangles. So let's go ahead and first of all draw a picture. We've got y equals x squared. That's going to look like that. And then we've got y equals 1, which goes across here. So this is the shape that I'm concerned with. And now we're going to do squares perpendicular to the x-axis. So again, what I like to do, since I'm going perpendicular to the x-axis, I like to make a line on my figure that is perpendicular to the x-axis. So that's going to form my side of whatever I'm doing. Um, we're going to do squares. So again, my setup is going to be volume equals um, a to b of the area. And then I'm going to come over here and do a little side trip. The area, since it's a square, again, is just going to be side squared. And just like we did on the previous example, we'll get to get that, we'll do top minus bottom. The top of that, notice, is the line y equals 1. And the bottom is the line x squared. And notice that whole thing is squared. And from there, I'm not going to try to simplify that one. So we're going to have volume equals. It's going to go from an x value to an x value. And to get that is just the point of intersection. It would be x squared equals 1 which would be x equals plus or minus 1. So it's going to go from negative 1 to positive 1. And then the area that I found was 1 minus x squared squared dx. And then from here, I do believe I'll let my calculator do the work on this one. And if I do math 9 to get that answer, I should get 1.067 as an answer. And I would encourage you to try that on your calculator as well. All right, next thing. This time we're going to have equilateral triangles. All right, so we're still going to have the same picture. We're still having our cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis, so the line that I draw through the figure will be perpendicular to the x-axis. And this time, we're still going to have the same setup. It'll still go from A to B of the area. This time, to get the area, the area of an equilateral triangle, just in case you don't know it, is the square root of 3 over 2 s squared. So notice it's really almost identical to the square. We just have an extra square root of 3 over 2 out front. So when I'm going to figure this out, it will be square root of 3 over 2. Just like we did before, to get the side, it's going to be top minus bottom. So the top is going to be 1, and the bottom again is going to be x squared, and I do have to square that whole side. So from here, if I can go ahead and write my formula, it's going to be volume equals it will still, just like in example part A, it will go from negative 1 to positive 1, and then my area is going to be the square root of 3 over 2, 1 minus x squared, squared, dx. So now I have my setup, and from here, I can go ahead and get that area. And if, again, I'm going to use math 9 to help me do that. If I do that, I should get 0 0.924. Alrighty, let's try another one. Um, this next one, find the volume of the solid whose base is bounded by the curve y equals 4 minus x squared, y equals 0, whose cross sections taken perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles this time. All right, so again, we're going to start with drawing our picture. We'll have y equals 4 minus x squared, which starts up at 4, I know, and heads down like that. And then we have y equals 0. So this is the shape that is in question this time. And we're still going to go perpendicular to the x-axis. So the x-axis perpendicular, again, I'm going to make my line go this way, perpendicular. And this time, my cross sections are semicircles. So if you can kind of picture semicircles jutting out at you right now, that's what we're going to do. So the volume is going to be a to b, area of x dx. All right, so to get that area, I need the formula for the area of a half circle, basically. And the formula for the half circle would be 1 half pi r squared. Alrighty, so let's see if we can figure this out now. So this will be 1 half pi. I need the radius. And if you'll look at this, this if I draw a half circle, notice that this part right here would form the diameter of that circle. So I only need the radius of that circle. So if I do top minus bottom, the top would be 4 minus x squared. The bottom would be 0. I'm going to have to divide that by 2 to get the radius. So the way that this is going to look, my area formula is going to be 1 half pi, 4 minus x squared over 2 squared. So that's what it would look like. So when I go to write the volume, I'm going to have volume equals. Um, it's going to go from an x value to an x value. And to figure that out, we could set the two equal to each other, so 4 minus x squared equals 0, and then I get 4 equals x squared, so x is going to equal plus or minus 2, so negative 2 to positive 2. The formula that I found for my area was 1 half, 1 half pi, sorry about 
like that. Well, goodness gracious. Okay, 1 half pi, 4 minus x squared over 2 squared dx. And then from here, we'll let our calculator do the work for us. <clears throat> so I will use the math 9 feature. And when I do that, I'll get 13.404 as my answer. So hopefully now you can take the um, volume of cross-sections that are perpendicular to the x-axis.